Hey, everybody. It's Nick Green, uh, Atlanta Braves analyst. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everybody's safe. Uh, today's going to be a fun day. I am missing baseball like everybody else, but we get to talk to Javi Lopez, Braves legend. Javi, how are you doing, first and foremost? And what are you doing with yourself now? Uh, just like everybody else, stay home, try to stay sa safe. Uh, always trying to find something to do. I got two kids that I'm homeschooling, uh, helping my wife do <laughs> homeschooling. Uh, I think I've been learning a lot more than they do. But uh, yeah. that's what I've been doing, you know, oh, nice. to myself, you know, uh, working out, um, uh, you know, try to get a routine uh, and, and I try to avoid to be uh, boring. <laughs> <laughs> You're like me. I, I just try to find something for the kids to do every day. So it, it's been interesting. But I um, want to talk about the 1995 World Series. We on Fox Sports Southeast are going to air every game, uh, one through six, starting on Monday, April 27th. I uh, just go every single day one game at a time through Saturday. So I want to talk, talk a little bit about the 95 World Series. Um, in that series, game one, Maddox deals, right? You guys win that game. You start game two, your first World Series start. Um, take me through that moment, how it felt going into that start. Well, um, the good thing is that the first game, I was able to end up the game. I was able to play uh, towards the end of the game. So I get a little, you know, uh, feeling about what it feels like being in the World Series. The next day, I, I felt a lot more prepared because I already get, you know, the, the feel for it. Um, but still, it was a, a pretty exciting, pretty uh, unbelievable moment for me uh, in such a short time in the big league. I was able to be in that particular moment where a lot of players spend the whole career and never get a chance to, to, to be part of it. And, um, and it, was, it was a thrill for me. Um, I enjoy every minute of it. And, uh, well, I mean, it, it was pretty exciting. Okay, so we, we go still in game two. Um, you had good performance against Colorado and Cincinnati leading up to that, and NLDS and LCS. Um, you go into game two, you start game two, you hit that go-ahead home run in the bottom of the sixth. Um, did you feel locked in going into the World Series because of how well you played uh, in the previous series? Uh, no. Again, um, the fact that I that I make it to the World Series in such a short period of time, uh, I don't think uh, I was uh, I didn't have that pressure uh, as as much as I have it, you know, after that. Because uh, after that World Series, I went to the World Series two more times, and uh, the more I went. The, the, the more the pressure, um, but that particular um, moment, I was like, first of all, I was surprised that they walk uh, Rafael Belia to pitch me, and, and uh, <laughs> once they did that, I, 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 I told to myself, this is a moment. This is a moment that I need to step up, and, um, and it, it, it took a while because I, I followed it up quite a few times before I finally get the pitch to hit it right down the center field. Nice. Did you, um, when you're going through that moment, you're sitting there going, okay, this is my moment. Um, I have an opportunity here. The, you say the pressure was off you because you had more moments like that earlier in the, the no, no, season. After, after. What I'm saying, okay. it, was, it was pressure, but it's, it's, um, it's nothing compared to the pressure I had after that World Series. You know, the, the okay. more I went to the World Series, the, the more was the pressure. So the fact that I was uh, in the World Series uh, in such a short period of time in my career, uh, I think that helped me out to be a little bit more relaxed. Yes. Than if I was there, you know, after a few years in the big league. Gotcha. Hey, so as we go, we go to the, the eighth inning, top of the eighth in, in game two. Huge play. You pick off Maynard Ramirez at first base. It was a 4-3 ball game at the time, one out. Um, walk us through that play because I go back and look at it. And it looks like you guys set that play up. Absolutely. Absolutely. There was a couple of pitches prior to that pickup play where I saw Manny Ramirez taking a big league in first base. And um, it, was, uh, it was an opportunity for me to, you know, try to get him out. You know, at least try. <laughs> because um, it was uh, in the eighth inning. It, that could be a, a good rally for them. And if we can get him out, that could be, you know, uh, a big moment for us. And um, between me and Fred McGreeve, we had this signal where he, you know, he know when to cover, got it for him, and uh, he was ready. He was ready for my throw. 
Okay, so you caught our teammate and the broadcast booth, Tom Glavin, in both of his World Series starts. Uh, well, he won both of those games. He pitched well in the postseason that's, that's, uh, season, 1.61 1. ERA, World Series MVP. What made him so special during that postseason? He was uh, very consistent throwing, uh, using the corners. Uh, he barely pitch, uh, he barely throw a pitch down the middle. Uh, he was uh, pretty much trying to make them chase every pitch he wants to. Um, the fact that they didn't have the patience at a certain, you know, uh, moment, uh, that was an advantage for him. And uh, they were swinging in the pitches like, you know, three, four, five inches outside the corner. Yeah. And uh, and Glavin was keep putting that ball out there all the time because they, you know, they kept swinging it. So that was an advantage for us. Um, uh, but I guess his consistency, uh, that's what makes him, you know, very successful during those two games in the World Series. He never gave up any pitch. When he was coming inside, he was off the plate to mm -hmm. make sure he got that outside corner. And uh, he was using it like, you know, perfectly. And when I, when I look at that Cleveland lineup, um, it was incredible. You have Kenny Lofton, Vizquel, Carlos Baerga, Albert Bell, Eddie Murray, Jim Tomey, Manny Ramirez, Sandy Alomar. Does it ever get better than that as far as an offensive lineup? I don't think it does. Um, when you look at game planning for that lineup, how do you even game plan for that lineup? Well, the, the, I was um, – I got that question. I got that question quite a few <laughs> times. And I, the only way I can answer that question was that when we got into the World Series, we were prepared. Um, we, we have to, you know, be focused on ourselves, you know, to make sure that we, we you know, because – we were the worst enemy when it comes mm -hmm. to a World Series. You know, we don't have the uh, the attitude, uh, the energy to face any teams. Then we're in trouble. So facing that team, we knew that we were facing a really good team. But, you know, we were motivated. We knew that we were good enough to, you know, beat anybody. And uh, we were focusing on ourselves to make sure we've done our job, to make sure that we cooperate as a team. And... Uh, that's that was the plan pretty much from the beginning, and uh, even though they were a way better team, we you know we still got them. We got you know we stick with our plan. <laughs> yes, and, and so I'm gonna go back and, and do this for the fans because when I went back and looked at that lineup, um, I'm looking at numbers. Carlos Berger had 90 RBIs, hit over 300. Kenny Lofton 54 stolen bases, hit over 300. Albert Bell 50 homers, 126 RBIs. Eddie Murray 323. Tommy 314. Man Ramirez hitting seven, hit 31 home runs, had 107 RBIs. To me, when, when talk, talk us through this too, because uh, I don't think the fans understand that when, when a fan looks at that lineup and they're saying this team is unbeatable. I played on a Yankees team in 06 that I thought was probably the best offensive team I've ever seen. But you guys take it to a new level with pitching, defense, and confidence. I think that's, that's the telling story of that 95 team. We got our pitching. We have a, one of the best, well, the best pitching staff in the major league and uh, having to face that kind of an offense, it wasn't, you know, nothing to worry about, you know, as long as they keep pitching the way they've been pitching throughout the whole year, you know, that we knew that we have a good chance to, you know, um, you know, that, that, you know, we got a good chance to win. Uh, and the good thing about our offense is that every day was a new guy being the hero. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have one guy that we have to depend on him. Uh, we pretty much uh, help each other through, you know, first to, 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 to the ninth batter. Every day there, there was a new hero, and uh, that's what, you know, that's what makes a, a really good champion uh, team. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that's the winning formula. It's fun to watch and it's fun to see. And uh, when I look at game six, obviously, Glavin, eighth shutout in game six, he was outstanding. When you look at Tom Glavin and the aura around him, the myth is, the legend is, he said, give me one run and that's all I need. First of all, did you hear him say that? And then second of all, once Dave Justice hit that home run in game six, did you guys feel like you were going to win no matter what? Well, yeah, uh, I didn't hear Glavin saying, give me one run, but uh, it wasn't surprised me if he said that because he was totally on fire that night. Uh, he knew he was going to get that win. Uh, when Justin hit that home run, I mean, for me, my part, I knew that that was it because uh, I knew we got Wallers in the bullpen. And uh, at that time, Waller was untouchable. 
And, um, you know, in my mind, uh, that was set pretty much after uh, just to hit the home run. And how confident were you guys with Mark Wollers? He was one of the few guys throwing 100 miles an hour at the time. And how important was he uh, through this postseason run? Oh, he was a key uh, during throughout the whole year. Um, he was on fire, you know, in the World Series and in, in these other previous uh, uh, series before the World Series. Um, and like I say, once uh, they just hit the home run, I, I knew for a fact we we're going to win because the way he was pitching was, you know, <laughs> untouchable. Take me through the emotion and celebration once Grissom caught that ball. Well, once he caught that ball, everything was completely changed. The emotion, uh, it was like a flashback to from the beginning of the season, what we, what we went through uh, throughout the year. Um, and it was like unbelievable. We couldn't believe that we actually beat Cleveland. And uh, I mean, and that emotion lasts pretty much a, a good couple of weeks. You know, it was it was a pretty exciting moment. Uh, we knew that was the first time the franchise won a, a, a World Champion Series, and um, we were pretty you know excited about it. Well, we can't wait to watch uh, every game. I know I'm going to be tuning into the TV. Uh, starting next week. On, so I can't wait to see all these games and, and bring back memories. I was a sophomore in high school Absolutely. at the time. So um, it, it's going to be fun to watch. But Javi, we appreciate your time. Stay Absolutely. safe. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All righty. Thank you.